Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part one for my 2D hack and slash, kind of like 2D Souls-like uh, programming course for Game Maker Studio 2. This is a pay what you want course, so there are two ways that you can support the course if you want to. There will be a link in the description to the resources required for this course. It's on itch.io, and if you want to donate to the course and support the course there, you can. Or I'll also provide a link to my pixel art course on Udemy, uh, a, a discount coupon so you can get that course as well. So that would be a way that you could support me while also getting a pixel art course along the way. So neither of those are necessary though. This course can be taken without uh, donating at all. And maybe you want to try the course first before you decide to donate. But let's jump right into it. Uh, the course can be taken with Game Maker Studio 2 or it can be taken with Game Maker Studio 1.4. I'll mention the differences, but I will be recording using Game Maker Studio 2. So let's create a new project here and we'll do a Game Maker language project. And I'll come into Game Maker Studio 2 right here. And we need to name this project. I'm just going to name it Grave because that was the name of the original game that I made for the Ludum Dare. And you can name it whatever you want. And we want to zoom this in just a bit so it's at 150. We can see these a little bit better. Okay, so I'm aiming this course at beginners. So if you're brand new to Game Maker, you probably haven't seen this before. This is your workspace. This is where basically you do all your work. And over here on the right, this is your resource tree. You uh, All the resources for your games, whether they're the pictures of your characters or the levels or the code and the objects, they all go over here in the resources. So the very first thing we're going to do is I'm going to come into my downloads here. And you should have downloaded the resources already. You should have a, pro uh, a folder called Grave Resources. We're going to come into here, come into sprites, come into skeleton. Oh, there's a lot of skeleton sprites already. And I'll do shift, click on this, do shift, click. And we should be able to drag these over here and drop them into our project. Might need to drop them into sprites, right? There, there we go, okay. So I just had to hover over sprites and drop them right there to make sure that they got imported. And uh, the animations have the word strip at the end of them. That's what makes Game Maker so it knows how to import these automatically like this. So we're just gonna, we're going to remove the word strip from all of these. Some of them don't have it. You can you can scroll to go up and down or you can middle click to pan. And you can see all it has done is import a bunch of sprite resources here for our main character. Oops, hit stun looks good. Bones look good. There's attack two, here's damage two. Attack three and da oh, damage three right there. Those are those are the images for the hurt boxes, and they won't be visible while playing the game. So now that we've got our sprites imported, let's create a new group right here. So we're going to add a group. We'll call this skeleton. Grab all of these and drag them into our new group like that. There we go. We've got all of them in a new group. So you've done the very first step you need to creating a game, which is importing in resources, importing in these sprites that you can use for your character. Now we need to do something with these sprites. We need to actually use them and you can see all of these sprites are for different actions or different things in relation to our character. This, this, the skeleton is the main character, I should add. So all of these different 
images are going to be used uh, for our main character and we need a way to group them together and to run code on them and that's where objects come in. So we're going to right click on objects right here and do create object and we get a new object in our workspace and we're going to name this O underscore skeleton and we can assign a sprite to it. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so sprite. We can zoom in just a bit here. It's hard to see these sprites because of the color I chose. It's an interest. I guess if I hover over them, I can see them better. So we're going to choose skeleton idle right here. So we'll choose skeleton idle. And uh, that looks good. Now we need so we have an object, but now we need a level to put this object in. And GameMaker has already created a room for us. If you're in GameMaker Studio 1.4, you're going to need to create your own room. I'm going to press F2 and rename this R underscore world. Well, we'll just call it graveyard. Graveyard. Because that's the only world this skeleton's ever going to see is a graveyard. He's trapped trapped in the graveyard forever. So now when I double click on this room, you can see that it opens up a new tab up here. So we've got our workspace right here and we've got our room right here. And there's a lot of information that kind of pops up over here. This information is all contextual, contextual. So it only pops up when you click on the room and it has to do with uh, basically, these are these are layers which have to do with kind of how we design our level, and this is a list of all the all the instances or things inside of our level, and then down here is our view information down at the very bottom. It's kind of cramped down here at the bottom, so we need to change this information. Uh, you can hold Control and scroll to zoom in and out a little bit, so we can see our room. And this information down here, we want our game room to be a width of 1280, 1280. That's a, a, a pretty long room. And then a height of 360. So you can see our game room is very, very wide, but not very tall. Okay. And we can put, we can actually grab our skeleton right over here and just drag it into the room. And we'll put it like right here. Now we have a background inside of our room. You can see we have two layers, an instances layer. This is where we're going to put all of our objects, basically, all of the things in our game. And then a background. And this is going to be, uh, we'll just set this as a basic color for now. And the color that I'm going to use is going to be just kind of a light gray. Let's choose maybe this gray right here. So that's hex nine 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 nine. What a terrible color. Too many nines. But that looks pretty good. Our character stands out. Looks good. Now at this point we can actually run our game. So if we run the game you will see our character, he's animating right there, moving kind of quickly, and then our entire room. And our character is really tiny. So what we need to do is set up a view that's going to kind of zoom in on our character here. Let's click on our instances layer and drag our character a little bit. Zoom in on our character here so it doesn't look so tiny. And the way that we can do this is by coming down to our uh, viewport and camera properties and just check this little tick. In GameMaker Studio 1.4 there'll be a tab called views. You want to enable viewports and then you want to click on viewport 0 and you want to do visible. Now this created a view for us but look how big that view is. That's not the right size. So we want to change our view 
width and height to be 320 by 180 like this okay that's small it's clear up here at the top of our room so we're going to move our character just kind of up in there for now and run the game again and our we're zoomed in on our character but it's all stretched and looks really funny um, that's because we set the size of the view but not the size of the window that we use so this is the window right here it's called the port so this is the size of the window and we need to set that down here in our view properties again you'll see view port settings and right here we're going to set our width to well there's a lot of different ones you could do you could do 640 by 480 1280 by 720 I'm going to do in between those two which is 960 by 540 and these are all a 16 by 9 aspect ratio if you don't know what an aspect ratio is that's fine but it's just basically it, how far is it this way compared to how far it is this way we'll run our game again now we're starting to look really good. This is starting to look like uh, a game, the game that we want to make. But we need to change our character's animation speed because that is much too fast. And this is where we're going to write our very first piece of code. So come into the object, add an event, add a create event. Inside of here, we, my text, I must have updated recently because that text is small. I'm going to really quickly fix that. So if we come into preferences here and then we come into text editors, code, and set our default size to 24 maybe. Apply. Oh, that's huge. Look how big that is. <laughs> I don't think we need it that big. Let's try 20 apply okay and 18 what do you guys think I think 18 is big enough I think 18 should be good but I want to make sure that you guys can easily read this so um, what we did was we came into our object and we added a new event the event is the when something when something happens so maybe it's when the player presses the space key then there's some code associated with that event. You can see this little line that comes over, drags over, and the, it will run this code. Now the create event means when this object is created in the room, we can run some code in here. So we just went add event, create event. It popped up with our new little code window and we can write some code in here. So. How do we slow down our character's animation speed? Well, there is a property inside of all of our Game Maker objects called Image Speed. And you can see as I'm typing, Game Maker's like, oh, you probably want this right here, Image Speed. I can, I can select that and be choose. Yep, that's the one I want, Game Maker. And once we have access to the image speed, we can set it. Now, I want to encourage using the help file. So if you middle click on this variable, which will allow access here, it will open up the help file inside of GameMaker and give us information on image speed. It says, this variable determines the speed in which GameMaker Studio 2 will cycle through the sub images for the current instance sprite. So the current image that we're using it will cycle through each image now you can see uh, that it's the speed given the speed value given is a multiplier with one being the default value and setting it to 0.5 will half the animation speed while setting it to 1.5 will double it if the sprite has no sub images, the variable will have no effect. However, if you set your image speed to too fast like this, uh, it will skip frames. So you don't really want to do that. And then it gives us an example and tells us what it returns. So great. We can click back on our workspace over here and 
our image speed is currently set to one. Obviously that's the default. So we wanna set it to 0.5, which would be half, 0 0.5. We can save our game with control S and run it up here with the little run key again. And there we go, that's a much slower animation speed. I'm actually gonna set mine, you can set it to pretty much whatever you want. I'm gonna set mine to 0 0.4. I want it to animate just a little bit slower. And that looks pretty good. So there you go, you've written your very first piece of code, you've imported your first sprites, you've uh, created your first object and set up your very first view. You've also uh, opened up the help file and the documentation already and read some of that. So we'll be doing more of that during this course. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this very first part one. In part two, we'll be adding more on to all of this stuff that you've already learned. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in part two.